Welcome to the second edition of the Pat Dooley Show. I'm Pat Dooley, glad to have you along. We have a special guest later on here in the show. Obviously, the first weekend went very well for the Florida Gators. Great crowd. In fact, you guys surprised me a little bit how loud you were for an opening day. A lot of people have asked me if that was the worst team that's ever come in here, and I will say no, it's not the worst. They have had some high school games on Florida Field, so it wasn't the worst, but it wasn't a good team. I thought they were pretty well coached until the end of the first half and the clock management was just awful. I don't know what they were thinking there. Uh, the weirdest thing was Ahmad Black not starting. Last year's leading interceptor, but got beat out, maybe in the doghouse a little bit as well. And Will Hill and Major Wright starting the game. Also, you had some guys suspended, although Urban Meyer said they didn't get themselves ready to play, which is now code for suspended. We know what Norris Jenkins did, what Jermaine Cunningham did, we have no idea. But the Gators got to have a relative healthy, call, healthy. Carl Johnson got nicked up a little bit, but he should be fine. So we're going to come back in just a minute. We're going to talk to our special guest, Drew Copeland from Sister Hazel. I know you know the song. We're going to have him sing it right here on the Pat Dooley Show. All right, welcome back to the Pat Dooley Show. I'm joined by my special guest today, Drew Copeland from Sister Hazel. Special guest. Special guest. I feel I honored. Well, you should be honored. You're only the you know you're following in the footsteps of Shelley Meyer. So. Oh, I am honored then. Exactly. All right. And, uh, you know, Drew's like a lot of the Gator fans that jumped on the bandwagon late and with all the championships. What? And, Come on, uh, man. I was there for 79. I was were, there before did you go 79. To any games in 79. Absolutely. I used to sneak in when the south end zone was bleachers. I used to pull the, me and my brother would pull the fence up and we would sneak in and get in line and sell Cokes or programs so that we could stay at the game. So, yes. Now, when you guys tour uh, and you, you're at a place like Columbia or Tuscaloosa, I mean, do you give the fans a hard time or do you lay low? You lay low. <laughs> um, but, but I will tell you this. I don't care where you are. There is go Gators in every crowd. I mean, somebody's doing a Gator chomp. And, um, and occasionally, if things are going a certain way during a football season, I'll let a couple of remarks slide. Because they'll forgive me. Once we play all for you, it's like all is forgiven. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I'll, I'll let things slide. It's no secret that, we're, uh, that we are University of Florida grads. Um, I don't bring the Gator guitar on tour, I obviously. Like that guitar. I know I do too, but I don't. I don't bring that out to like Athens. Certainly, uh, these guys are unbelievable in concert. If you haven't had a chance to see them go, you got another chance coming up. Is, is it a coincidence you're playing the night before the Tennessee game? Absolutely not. In <laughs> fact, I, I I bother our touring uh, our touring agency constantly about the football season. It it, um, it never really works out because what would be ideal for us is to play you know, in Athens or in uh, Knoxville or one of those one of those cities the night before a game. Right. But then we gotta play the Saturday night too, so it wouldn't yeah, work out yeah. for me anyway. I'd have yeah. to leave. And if we book the if we book the shows for that night, you run the risk of the, it being a night game. And so we don't we've never done that. So, but the Tennessee You've game a few that way, haven't you? Oh man, it kills me. And I can tell you there's been many a time when I'm sitting on the tour bus watching the game on satellite that I go I'm not going on till this is in the bag, you know, <laughs> and um, so it's almost Sister Hazel out there right now. It's wait, wait till Drew will be out. In yeah, the yeah, exactly. Yeah, Florida's on the four. But this was no <laughs> mistake. Um, it worked out really well, and the performing arts is uh, the, the performing arts center. All the people there have always been so kind to us, and we're excited to come back there. And the show's almost sold out, and uh, and this time we are lucky enough. We're staying around. We're gonna be at, we're gonna be at the game. We're going to the game. That's we're great. all going to the game. We bought. Um, the band bought tickets for for the crew and everybody, and I think even some of our management's coming down, and so we're gonna we're gonna go to the game. Now wait a minute, you're tight with Urban. You, yeah. Doesn't he owe you some tickets? No, you know what? Um, I guarantee you, if I asked him, he would get me tickets, and so would Jeremy and all the. I really don't like to ask if right. I don't absolutely need to. Unlike me with you, right? No, <laughs> but you know what? I, you don't unless you absolutely need to too. Yeah. So it's. It's a cool thing, and, and um, I only wish that some of those guys could come out that Friday night, but you know what it's like the night before a game for, yeah, for a lot of those absolutely. people. Absolutely. Uh, now, let me ask you this. How did the relationship with Urban begin? Was it just he heard you guys, or he just wandered in and knocked on his I door? I wandered in and knocked yeah. on the door and said, hey, man, here's welcome to Gainesville, and here's who we are, and here's what we're about. And I think the funny part is I think he was like, oh, thanks put this over here you know like hands it to an yeah. assistant well in the early days that's the way it was with everybody <laughs> yeah and, but but he you know he, he got into the music and and uh liked it and and um we stayed in touch and and we we crossed paths at a few different functions right. along with uh, along with billy donovan we you know struck up a friendship and billy's great um i stopped by and saw billy just uh just last week and uh he may be coming out to the show and oh, good. urban came down and saw a show at uh at the house of blues in orlando it's really cool having that relationship because like I said, growing up in Gainesville, 
um, going to games since, you know, I can remember, uh, and, you know, I mean, back when Pin Pan Alley was there and, you know, all that <laughs> stuff. Uh, huge Gator fans. Ken and I both, you know, grew up, we bleed orange and blue. And so it's nice to have that. And, and you know, all the success that we've, that we've grown into, you know, it's mm -hmm. awesome. And, and, you know, people, people ask us sometimes on the Sister Hazel website, we'll get questions like, you know, Spurrier or Meyer. And my, well, answer, answer, right my answer to that question is, <laughs> There is, Meyer's success may have taken longer if there wasn't Spurrier. So no, you can't go point. either or. I mean, it's, to me, uh, Spurrier took the program and elevated it to a, to a, a, a really prominent national level. And then Urban came in after, after a little down cycle um, and, uh, and continued that and has, and has taken it on and added so many awesome uh, things for the for the program as far as the tradition goes and bringing back yeah. old players I mean that kind of stuff to me is yeah, I, I it makes this you. place special it really does yeah well speaking of either or we're gonna have Drew do a segment with us later we call, like to call either or you have to answer some real football questions then. all right but I don't know how many of you uh, read the column I did last uh, this summer about Drew and, and Urban and how Urban's gotten very comfortable with his setting in Gainesville and now his quote is on the cover of your album I'm excited yeah. about their CD I'm sorry I'm still Still old school. Well, I um, after after reading it and having so many comments, I went and uh, and checked the iTunes download history over the over those few weeks, and um, it went from very small numbers to a large spike. And my management <laughs> company goes, "Okay, you know, time to capitalize." And so they redid the sticker with Urban's quote on there, and I appreciate it. You're a good man. Well, no, Free hey, tickets. I was right. Do you need, do you need some right. tickets? I need six. <laughs> hey, it was uh, I was dealing with two of my favorite people, Urban Meyer and Drew Copeland. And uh, you guys have a new CD out. I've gotten it. I downloaded it from iTunes. Thank and you very much. My iPod. I think Release is the best song on there. I love that song. Thanks. Now, I, I, I want to know who wrote that song and who wrote some of the others. Which ones did you write? Because I know you all from the band wrote, right? We did. This, this album was done differently. We all brought in um, songs and saw them through from uh, the beginning to end, the pre-production all the way through the production in the studio. Um, it was designed that way. It's the same way we did the holiday record. Right. And it made it a really stress-free uh, venture. It was a lot of fun to go in and do it that way because there was no stress about, well, are you going to like this? Are you going to make this? You know, it, it, was, it was like, hey, man, you're the captain. Make that song what you want it. It was a lot of fun. Ryan wrote Release. Did he? Ryan wrote the bro breakup songs. And so he wrote Release and Take a Bow, Take a bow. That was a and Fade. Um, I wrote uh, Run for the Hills, I Believe in You, and One Life. So those are the songs I, I wrote. I believe in you. Another great song. Thanks. It is a really good. I think it's one of their best albums yet. He is going to play something, however, from his solo album. If you haven't received it, bought it, uh, downloaded it, you can do that. It's it's very good. I've I've lent it to friends, but I always have to get it back. And uh, they've gone out and bought it afterwards. And the song that I used in the uh, piece on Urban Meyer, "A Little Like Heaven," is the song he's going to play. So. A Andrew, I get called him Andy one time. He got really oh, mad on the golf don't, course. Don't Remember? like that, yeah. Don't, don't like Andy. Andy. Is going to play for you right now. Well, it was out on Peas Prairie where I got my first kiss. There's a schoolyard where we would play as kids.
There's the old graveyard where my loved ones lie. And the church still stands where I was baptized. Yeah, it's the place I go when I can't think clear. So when my time is up, please bring me back. And I can't stay gone too long Where I come from Yeah, where I come from Well, it's a little light heaven, yeah And I can't stay gone too long Where I come from Where I come from Okay, it's time for the weekly list. You know I like to rank things, so I'm ranking them again. Now, the UAA, which we call the firm, and I do not get along on the subject of the Ring of Honor. And it was my idea. They won't admit it. But three years before they decided to do it, I wrote a column how they ought to have a Ring of Honor, and here's the first four people that should go in, which happened to be the first four that went in. I still think they should open it up. I think they've written way too restrictive a criteria, which was only to let those four in, and then Wilbur Marshall when he threw a fit when he didn't get in. So with that in mind, I have the next five who should go in. Number five, Mr. Tubitz. Come on, man. He's, he's meant more to, to Florida football than just about anybody. When you think about it, Florida football has been Mr. Tubitz. George Edmondson Jr., he's retired now. Put him up on that wall. You need him on that wall. Number four, how about Chris Collinsworth? Good buddy of mine. Uh, you, know, the, you know, a lot of these guys are in the, don't forget, Emma Smith's in the Ring of Honor because of what he did in the NFL. Well, Chris Collinsworth should be in the Ring of Honor because of what he's done in NFL broadcasting. He's a great ambassador for the University of Florida, and I think he's worthy of being in. Number three, Carlos Alvarez. I think Carlos Alvarez deserve, deserves to be in there, not only for what he did as a sophomore with the Super Softs, but for what he's done since then. He's a great ambassador for the University of Florida. Number two, this one will surprise you, John J. Tiger. John J. Tiger. He built the stadium. Put him up on the wall. Come on, he built the stadium. Also started the SEC and Grant and Nate scholarship. So you got to put him up there. And number one, Lomas Brown. Best offensive lineman in Florida history. He can't get in because he doesn't have all these criteria. Put him on the wall. Those are my five. All right, it's time for our weekly installment of Either Or. And Drew's been nice enough to put his shoes back on and come over here yeah. and talk to me. Very nice <laughs> of you to do that. You're Hope welcome. you enjoyed the song. It's one of my favorites. Uh, either or is a segment we play here, as you can see, right here, black either and white. Or. All right. And the first question, either or, which team are you buying as being back, Notre Dame or Tennessee? Although I'm not sure that Notre Dame can beat Michigan, I'm going to say it's Notre Dame. I think, that they're, I think that they probably have a little more talent and may do a little better this year. And it's going to come across as them being back more this year because of their schedule right. anyway. So I'm going to say, I'll say Notre Dame. Yeah, and that's the other thing. Tennessee still got obviously all their tough games ahead of them. Uh, Nevada was a game I, I thought they might be able to give them trouble. So I think Notre Dame, I agree with you on that. I think they're, they're closer to back. But the Notre Dame-Michigan loser is going to be in trouble this week. I agree with that as well. All right. Uh, which coach would you least like to be this week, Al Gro or Chip Kelly? Chip Kelly, 100%. <laughs> Had a bad day, didn't I, I mean, i got a grocery list of reasons why. I do have some feelings about the after-game uh, fiasco. That guy deserved to get dropped because he shouldn't have come over and taunted him in the first place. If he had just dropped him and then kind of walked away and gone to the locker room, he wouldn't have been gone for the season. I agree with you 100%. And, but, but it was after he, he jacked up his own players and then went like he was going to go for the crowd yep. that it showed a complete lack of control. But that one dude deserved to get dropped. I, um, You'd have dropped him. I, I'd have dropped him. I might have continued after the one. <laughs> but, I, and you know, did we ever find out what the coach was trying to say to him when he came over? Did anybody ever say? Because that coach was trying to stop yeah. him before he even got to Well, him. I, that's because he saw the kid say something. And what he said was obviously inflammatory. The word is, is because uh, in a Sports Illustrated article, Garrett Blunt had said, we owe them an ass whipping. Right. That he said, you guess you owe us two ass whippings now. And that's what he sa uh, supposedly said. I'm, I never got confirmation on that. Well, you Not know what, man? He was, asking State for, beat writer. he was asking for it. So him getting dropped was kind of funny to me. And I wish the guy just walked off then because he lost his whole senior career. And I wish there had been a way for him to redeem himself. But, man, they had to act swift and they had they to did. act. Yeah. They, they had to do what they did. I, I just... I feel bad. So I feel bad for the coach on that. 
And then also the fact that the previous head coach is now going to come out of the press right. box. And, and, and second quarter of the game. I mean, give him at least a half before you start second guessing. Him. Yeah, man, I, that's that's got to be brutal. So well, that's my that's Well, my I pick. agree with you in principle. I'm going to go with Al Grove for this reason. Chip Kelly's still going to be employed next year, and Al Grove's not. Okay. When you lose to William & Mary, you're in big trouble. He was on the hot seat anyway. Way to come out firing. Yeah. And a, and a nice, uh, by the way, nice performance by the ACC this week. <laughs> Miami and FSU almost bailed them out of it. Which NFL team gets a win this week? The Bucks, who are hosting Dallas, or the Jaguars, who are at Indianapolis? I'm going to say the Jags at Indy. And I, concerns I, about Indianapolis, the new uh, new coach and everything? I, I do have concerns, but, they're, but they've still got a pretty solid core. And, and the Bucks, um, I don't, I, it's like it seems uh, very unorganized not, down there. It's not pretty. I'm, I'm with you on this. I don't think either one of them wins, but if I had to pick one, I'd go with the Jags. Just because the Bucks have Byron Leftwich at quarterback, and I, right. I don't get that. Right now, you know what? You know what is confusing about that is I think Leftwich has some skills. He does, but he doesn't seem like the kind of guy that is uh, willing to work as hard as it takes to to be at the top of what he's got. Because man, he's got some God-given stuff that a lot of guys don't have. But uh, it doesn't seem like to me that he takes it that seriously. He's just kind of right. doing what he's got to do to get by. Yeah, and he takes you know his whole delivery is my issue with him. He takes it back to here to throw it. Yeah. You know, you can get away with that in college. You can't in the NFL. Yeah. The last one uh, on either or, whose Heisman chances took a bigger hit this week? Sam Bradford with his injury or Terrell Pryor for wearing Vic on his eye black? <laughs> oh, nice, man. huh? Are you kidding me? Where are, his, where are his people that are looking out for him? Where's his coach? Where's his coach? Yeah. Hey, I mean, how, how did you slide off. in with that? And then know? he says, what was the quote afterwards? He said, oh, everybody murders somebody. Everybody kills somebody. Everybody steals stuff. Really? What? <laughs> what? Yeah, that, he went off my ballot as an even contender yeah. uh, right away. So. And look, man, I'm not, I, and, and, and I'm not, I, I think Vic paid his, paid his due, and I, I'm not against him getting another shot in the NFL, but I certainly am not going to be, especially glorify Pryor, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to glorify him, and Pryor being in the position he's in now, he's not just a high school kid anymore, he is a role model for people now, and you can't go send that right. message, you know? So, well, I'm going to say that uh, I'm going to say off Trump. your list. Yeah, you you have a vote, by the way, this year? I, they didn't, I still haven't gotten yeah, my, yeah. my ballot. But. Maybe I'll just let you do, use mine. Oh, okay, thanks. We'll Maybe I'll get Spurrier. <laughs> see if Spurrier will let me take it. He's got one. Oh, T Timmy's got one. You can get one from Timmy. <laughs> that's going to do it for either or, and it's going to do it for another Pat Dooley show. I want to thank my special guest, Drew Copeland, for coming in. I appreciate him. Next week's musical guest will be Paul McCartney. <laughs> Stepping down, huh? Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> he's not coming in here. Hey, well, let's go see what's in Dr. Football's email bag. You know, before I go, I want to thank everybody for making last week's show a huge success around here. Uh, over 40,000 hits, and I appreciate it. Also, you can follow me now, Pat Dooley, twitter.com slash pat lower score Dooley, if you want to see what I'm saying. But let's see right now what's in Dr. Football's email bag. Michelle Searney wants to know, Pat, what do you think of the new scoreboards? Well, it's scoreboard for us because the north end zone we can't see from the press box. It's kind of weird. We're over there in the corner, and you can't see the north, but you can see the south. I thought that was spectacular. Hey, for $5.7 million, it should be, but it really looked good. I thought the stadium looks right now as good as it's ever looked, better than it's ever looked, and probably uh, is better than any, any stadium I go to all year. That's going to do it for the second Pat Dooley Show. I want to thank Drew Copa, my special guest. What a great job he did. And if you want to send questions to Dr. Football, you know how to do it. Dooley P at GainesvilleSun.com. Until next time, Pat Dooley of the Gainesville Sun saying so long from the Sunshine State.